Hello, hello. Welcome to the iPad Ignite Online Teaching with Apps and Strategies. It's February 2nd. We are working with Buena Vista today. We have 15 participants with us today. And if you haven't already, please sign in on the sign in form in the chat, or you can go to bit.ly slash PBV capital PD in dash out. And also the links to these slides are in the chat, so you can access those there. I'd like to introduce our distance learning team. We have Shannon, who's joining us today. Everybody. We have Jill Fetters, who's also joining us. Hello. And then I'll be leading most of the session today on the iPad. My name is Hans Tolman, and we're happy to be your distance learning team. And these are our um, session objectives. We're going to start by engaging in the notes app on your iPad. Then we're going to explore some iPad tips. Before I continue, I'm going to mute my music to eliminate any, any confusion. Uh, so we're going to explore your iPad tip apps. Um, and then we're going to explore the self-service app. Then we're going to explain about managing apps and how that works. Then we're going to elaborate on strategies for online teaching. And then we're going to evaluate and share apps and strategies. And that's, that's what we're doing today, guys. So when the iPad was released way back in 2010, which was 10 years ago, uh, Steve Jobs, uh, go ahead and take a look, take a moment to read what Steve Jobs said about the iPad. So it's almost like Steve was trying to predict the future. And he said that iPads are way better than a laptop and better than a smartphone. Um, if you go down to the bottom of your Zoom link, you can click on the react button and you can either give a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you agree with that. So go ahead and show me if you agree or disagree with a thumbs up. And if you're not sure where that reaction button is, um, you can just give me a physical thumbs up. It doesn't have a thumbs down feature. It does have it a thumbs doesn't. Down. No, but it oh, has, man. has a clap. Oh, no, it has crying. So we could maybe oh, do Oh, okay. I need to replace that. So thumbs up or cry. Or I should use a laugh. Well, we're gonna we're gonna find out. Um, and we are going to be um, engaging in a few things, but typically, oh, and also something you may have noticed is um, this session is laid out in a 5E uh, instructional model, which is common for NGSS uh, science and also STEM lessons. And the components are engage, explore, explain, elaborate, and evaluate. So we're going to start with um, engaging, which typically means I'm going to engage my students with a question or something to snag your interest and give you an opportunity to share what you know. So we're going to go, um, I'm going to go through the steps on this activity um, quickly, but then I'm going to go back over them more slowly. And um, we're going to take about five minutes for this activity, so you can go at your own pace. And the first thing that you're going to do is you are going to turn on your iPad by pressing the home button. And the home button is down at the bottom of your screen. I don't know if you can see that. That's right, right down there at the bottom. Thank you, Jill and Shannon, my Vanna White. And once your iPad is on, now if the home button doesn't work, you may have to press the top button at the top corner, not those, not those volume buttons on the side, but the very top. There's a little, there's a little button there that you're going to press and hold. And if you've never opened up your iPad before, you may have to go through the setup process. But anyways, you're going to press. Um, the home button, and I'm going to start sharing my iPad just so you guys can see what I'm doing. Let's see if that works. 
one of the teachers said their um, iPads asking for an what did it say, Sylvia? iCloud ID number. If there's yeah, a way, you can... Apple, Apple oh, ID is the other thing. If there's a way to skip that option, you can skip past that. Uh, if you're setting up your iPad for the first time, there should be a little option on the bottom of your screen to skip. Awesome, thanks, Sylvia. So once you are on your iPad, what I'm gonna have you do is I'm gonna have you look for the Notes app. And the Notes app looks like this little guy right there. You can look on my Zoom screen and see where I've put this little, this little marker here. So go ahead and click on the Notes app. And once you're here, you're going to look for a little button in the top right corner that looks like that. Yes, yeah, Shannon. If you is the if this is the first time you've been in to notes, just go ahead and hit continue. And then when it's asked you to turn on the iCloud, um, just hit not now. Thank you, Shannon. Yes. And if you're coming up into any of these roadblocks, just feel free to interrupt me and and let me know. So once you're in your notes app try to look for the little new notes icon at the top right corner. And I'm gonna bring my little thing there. So it's right up there. And then you click on that. And then I would like you to title this ideas for iPad. And then you can press return. And then here's what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna ask you to do for the rest of your time. You see these buttons up here at the top? I want you to start clicking on those and clicking at least four different buttons to see what it does. And then you're just gonna write down one idea into this note about something new that you've learned. So go ahead and take some time to explore that now. Now, for those of you who need those directions again, take a deep breath. And I'm gonna walk you through that one more time. So you're going to press your home button. Then you're going to look for the notes app. It looks just like this. It's kind of, the top has a strip of white, looks like kind of like a pad of paper and then white at the bottom. Click on that to open it. And if you haven't created your new notes yet, look at the top corner where there's that new note icon and then tap that. And then you're going to title this ideas for iPad or ideas for using an iPad, whatever you wanna say. And now you're gonna explore these top buttons here. And I'll give you about another minute to explore or engage, excuse me. Gonna play a little bit of music while we wait. If you guys feel like getting up and dancing, you know, just turn your camera off, let loose. Oh, Shannon is showing off what she's learned. Now, so you're you're 
you're clicking on at least four buttons, four different functions in the notes app to see what they do. Then I want you to write one helpful tip in your notes. And then I want you to write that same idea in the chat for our Zoom session. So what was one helpful tip that you discovered or one helpful thing in the notes app that you could see yourself using again? Give you guys about one more minute. And Mrs. Blizzard says we can create bulleted points. Nice. Oh, Denise can add a grid, like a table. Katie can scan a document. That's kind of helpful. And then Laura says lines and grids for notes. Ooh, and Miss uh, Zuniga says I can see myself using the drawing tool for quick notes. Nice. And Shannon says uh, the text feature would be great for sharing on Zoom to teach math. Ooh. Sylvia says, draw notes. Awesome. So hopefully you came away with at least one thing that you found helpful with the notes app. Now we're gonna move on to the explore section. And this is where you're gonna have a chance to dig deeper with some hands-on activity. And so let's explore. You guys are gonna have a chance to explore the tips app. And I'm gonna talk you through these steps then I'm gonna go through them again, and I'm gonna model for you on the iPad a little more slowly. So here's what you're gonna do. When you're ready, go at your own pace. You can wait for me or move on ahead. You are going to leave the notes app by clicking the home button, which is right at the bottom of your iPad. Then you're going to look for an app called the tips app by swiping right or left, on your home screen. So there's all those apps you're gonna swipe right or left. And you're gonna look for the yellow app with the white light bulb. Then you're going to select Welcome to iPad. If you are an iPad Pro, then check out another tutorial set. Then you're going to read, try, and swipe left through the tips. Then double click on the home button, open your notes app, and write one more helpful tip in your notes and then share that tip in the chat. So that's a lot. I'm gonna go through those steps again and I'm gonna walk you through each of those steps. So let me share my screen right now. Cause that was a lot. So you're gonna start by clicking on your home button. Or actually, I think I said double click. And that's going to pull up any apps that you have open. See if you can find. No, actually, no, just press it once. Now you're going to use your fingers to swipe left or right, and you are going to look for the tips app. And remember, it's that yellow or orange app with the white light bulb. Once you've found it, go ahead and click on that tips app. Oh, Sylvia is taking it up to a spicy level working with apps in split view. Nice. The rest of you, or the rest of us, are going to click on Welcome to iPad. So click there. Now you get to read through this suggestion and you can read, try, you can actually open up, you know, the settings app and try these out. And then when you're done with reading or trying this app, swipe left and then you have a new app. And this, uh, this activity that we're doing right now was just released today on Tech Tip Tuesday. So go ahead and take about three to four minutes to swipe through these tips, read them and try some of them out. And when you're done, double click on the home button, go back to your notes and write one more idea 
on how you can use this. And I'm already seeing some ideas being written in the chat. Working with apps and split view, like what Sylvia had said. Laura found out that she can personalize her home screen with widgets. Ooh. Denise just discovered split screen. That can be helpful. Go ahead and take another minute. Actually, I'll give you two minutes. And if you're like an iPad, you know, amazing person, check out some of those other tutorials in the, uh, tutorials in the tip app. Kevin says we could draw if we had the Apple Pencil. Well, Kevin, guess what? Steve Jobs, he wasn't a big fan of the stylus. He said, we're all born with pointers and drawers called the fingers. However, Kevin, I disagree with Steve. I think I would prefer to have a stylus, but guess what? I have this random free pen that someone gave me. And at the tip, it has this, this kind of rubber thing. So if if you've been given or if you've collected any of these types of pins, these are actually things that you can use to draw and manipulate your iPad. And this could be as little as 50 cents. Go ahead and take another minute. Make sure that you're trying out these tips in the tip app. Share, uh, write down one helpful tip you discovered in your notes app and then share that idea in the chat. 40 more seconds. Oh, Daniel said third through sixth grade got those. Yes, Apple pencils on the way. And the cool thing is it doesn't have to even be an Apple pencil. It can be, you know, a third party stylus that works with the iPad. I haven't looked them up, but this was the easiest one I had handy. All right, so hopefully, <laughs> Sylvia says, Shh, we want pencils, yes. You know, none of these other stylus are really gonna work. You're gonna have to get the Apple Pencil. And then Katie says, I think the split screen ability is really neat. Isn't that cool? It's kind of helpful because we got a multitask, right? Okay, so let's move on to the next explore activity. And we are gonna explore the self-service app. I'm gonna talk you through the, um, all of the steps and then I'm gonna show you. So here's what you're gonna do and go at your own pace. I'm gonna go through these twice. You're gonna click on the home button. That will take you to your home screen. Then you're going to swipe and look for the self-service app. It looks like this. It's like a sideways, four square, colorful, dotted windows looking thing. Once you find it, click on it. And then I'm gonna have you guys scroll down through all the apps. You're just gonna scroll and scroll, keep going, because there's a lot of apps in there. But what I want you to do after you're done scrolling through all the apps is I want you to install three or more familiar apps, okay? So three or more. You don't have to do more than three, but you have to do three, at least. Then I want you to install at least one unfamiliar app. 
and make sure that Jamboard and Flipgrid are both downloaded. Okay, then the very last step after you've installed familiar and unfamiliar apps, I would like you to click on the home button and I want you to, ex to explore those apps that you've installed. And if they ask you to sign in with Google, go ahead and sign in with Google just to explore them and see what they're all about. I'm gonna give you guys about five minutes to do that. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I'm going to share my iPad screen. So let me do that right now. This will just take me a second to set up. So the instructions were to click on the home button. So if you're following along, go ahead and press the home button. Then you're gonna use that swiping finger left or right, and you are going to look for an app called self-service. And my self-service app is down here on my dock. When you find it, click on that self-service app. Now the next step is I just want you to just, just take a little gallery walk through all of the apps that are district selected apps. In other words, the way these apps got on here is a bunch of teachers said, oh, we need that app. And they told their uh, principal and or their coach. And it was an app that a lot of people are going to use. So the principal or coach emailed IT and requested that this be added. So after you're done scrolling through all of the apps, you're going to then look for familiar apps like those Google apps. Like I would install, you know, the Drive, the Docs, the Classroom, the Google Meet, the Sheets, the Slides. So you're gonna install three familiar apps, but then I want you to install one or more unfamiliar apps. So you're gonna be clicking that install button a lot on this part. And then after you're done installing familiar and unfamiliar apps, you're gonna click on that home button. And then you're going to open these apps. Like there's my Flipgrid app. Make sure you download Flipgrid and Jamboard. I'm gonna click on that Flipgrid app. And it says, welcome to Flipgrid. I'm gonna click next. And then I'm going to make these selections and I'm gonna sign in Click up there in the top right corner on those three dots and sign in into my educator dashboard with my Google account. So I'm gonna give you guys a few more minutes to do that. And I'm gonna stop sharing my iPad screen and go back to my regular screen. You guys have about two minutes left. And if you forget the steps, look at my Zoom screen. When you're done installing your apps and exploring and signing into them, share the number of apps you installed on your iPad today. Drop it in the chat. Give me a number. The minimum is four. But Jill Fetters, she did three, so one more Jill. I'm just kidding. Denise did nine, whoa. Sylvia did four, Katie did five. Five, six, six, five, five, six. Well guys, it's not too late. You still have 40 seconds to install some more. Make sure that Flipgrid and Jamboard are installed. 
30 seconds. All right. Hopefully you've had a chance to install a bunch of apps. I'm gonna pause my music. And the next part is explain. Typically this is where students will explain what they've learned so far through their engagement and exploring. Um, so in the chat, have you discovered something extraordinary about the iPad so far? Think about what what Steve said about the iPad. Share your idea in the chat. I'll give you one minute to do that. What's so ex extraordinary about this? It's like 10 years old now, it's like a grandpa device. Literally grandpas are using this device. Like my dad won't use a laptop. He only uses an iPad. Shannon says it has a lot of power for being so small. Denise is loving the touch access. And the iPad you guys got from the district is the eighth generation, which is a very powerful version of the iPad. All right. If you have any other ideas, drop them into the chat. Now I wanna to talk to you guys, now that you've gotten a chance to explore and engage in the apps, let's talk about how do you manage your apps? There's four ways you can do it. You can manage apps on the home screen, on the self-service, um, on iCloud, and you can also install free and paid apps with your Apple ID account. So let's start with uh, moving stuff. Now, this is where you guys get to choose if you try this out or not. Um, I'm not gonna stay a long time on this slide. So if you wanna try it out, go ahead. The way you move apps by changing the order is you go to the homepage, you click and hold on an app. And then once the app gets uh, jiggy or jiggly, then that means it's ready for you to move it. And then you can drag that app. And when you're done, you just press the done in the top of the screen. So take 15 seconds to try to move an app. So again, you're clicking and holding on an app. Don't let go of it. When it gets a little shaky or jiggly, then you can move it by dragging it and then press done in the top right corner. All right, let's try another way we can move this. Now, let's say you wanna move a bunch of apps. You do the same thing. You click and hold one app. When it gets jiggly, then you tap other apps with your other finger. And then it's going to collect those apps and you can drag them as a group. Go ahead and try that out for about 20 seconds. So again, click and hold an app. Once it's jiggly, take your other finger and tap other apps to gather them as a group. And then you can move them. So Jill is asking, how do I organize apps alphabetically? This is a great question, Jill. I'm glad you asked that. Um, basically, you would have to drag them in the place where you want them. Because right now they're installed based on preset or default. Um, but to put them in ABC order, you would have to physically drag them into ABC order, which would be a hassle. So they pretty much go in the order of install date. All right, so hopefully you guys have figured out a way to move a bunch of apps in a group. Now, if you wanna delete an app, you press and hold one app. We can try the stocks app. 
if you don't need to look check your stocks while you're teaching your little kids you can if you don't need that app you can just press on it get it jiggy jiggly and then press that x so if you don't need the stocks app go ahead and delete that now give you about 10 seconds to try that also how's my pace going so far with this session am i going too fast or too slow let us know in the chat all right now notice how i had some apps on the bottom section of my ipad that's called the dock and on the left side you have your favorite apps and on the right side you have um, suggested apps that iPad thinks you'll, that you'll need. Now to get your favorite apps on your iPad, all you need to do is press and hold an app, then you drag it down to the dock and then let it go. If you wanna take apps off of the dock, you do the same thing. Press and hold an app, wait till it jiggles and then take it off of the dock. So I'll give you about 15 seconds to try that out. While you guys are finishing that up, adding your favorite apps to the dock, Sylvia really likes the portability of it. Laura says it's easy to use and there's always new things to discover, tips and tricks. All right, hopefully you had a chance to add your favorite apps to your dock and it looks like this. Oh, also, if you use an iPhone, all of these things that I'm teaching you apply to the iPhone. So you just got double taught. Now, if you decide that you want to collect your apps into folders, this is how you create folders. You click and hold on an app, you drag it over a similar app, and then you let go of it, and then you can name that folder. So I'm gonna wait till this animation restarts and I'm gonna walk you through that, those steps again. So I start by clicking and holding an app. In this case, it's Google Classroom. Once it gets a little jiggly, I'm gonna drag it over on top of that slides app and then I'm gonna let go. And I'm going to rename that folder Google because that's where I want all my Google apps. And then I can just click and hold other apps that I want to go in that folder. Once they get jiggly, I can add them one at a time or add them as a group. And if you wanna try that, I will give you 20 seconds to give that a shot. All right. Now, if you can't find an app that you want on the self-service app, um, the I IT requests that teachers speak to their academic coaches and principals first uh, to be sure that most of the site would benefit from an app before a request is mailed to us. Why would they do that? Well, they don't want um, the self-service to be overflowing with apps that are only used by a few teachers. Like maybe, Bitmoji is an amazing app and I want to use it, but I'm the only one in the district. They're probably not going to add it to the self-service app. Oh, Kevin shared something in the chat about alphabetizing apps. <gasps> Thank you, Kevin. I just tried it and it works. Really? Okay, mm -hmm. well, there, there's the answer, Joe. Thank you, because I like everything alphabetized. <laughs> now, if you have an iPhone or an iPad that you already use personally, and you want to access some paid apps, or just sync all of your um, like apps and media and passwords and accounts and photos and notes um, to your iPad, well, you can sign in to your iCloud account 
And the pros are is that it syncs and saves all of your content. You can text with iMessage from your iPad and your uh, data is private and secure on your iPad device. The cons are is that it requires an iCloud account. So if you don't have one, that may be a hassle for you to set up. Um, syncing media fills up your storage. So if you're syncing all of your you know, 50,000 photos, that may fill up your iPad. Um, and then personal and work is on one device. So depending on how you feel about that, and it may not be familiar to Android users. So those are some of the pros and cons. So if you do decide to go with your iCloud account and connect that, then make sure that you use your personal email, not your PBV USD. That was a request from IT. So I have a question for you and we may have to skip this one for now. Um, if you want to use your iCloud account, if it, the answer is yes, um, do you have an iCloud account? If it's yes, follow these steps and you can click on this link. If you do not have an account, you can follow these steps with your personal email. If you have no interest in iCloud, you can just um, don't worry about it. But what I'm gonna do really quickly, just in case we have some people who wanna check this out later, because I don't think we'll have enough time to cover this today. I'm going to drop these links into the chat so you can just open them and have them in your, your Chrome browser for when you're ready to check them out. All right, we're gonna move on to Elaborate. Um, since we had a late start, we're, um, we may have to rush through or miss out on some of this content, which is fine. So now you guys are gonna have a chance to build on what you've learned about. So what I'd like you guys to do is I'm gonna have you, I'm gonna go through these steps and then I'm gonna show you. I would like you to um, open your iPad camera app and I would like you to scan this QR code. It's a Wakelet QR code. And then I would like you to tap the pop-up that shows up on the top of your iPad. And then I'm gonna have you scroll through this Wakelet collection. Explore, read, try, play. And then if you find anything that's a good idea, a good strategy for using the iPad, you can write that in your notes app. And again, the way you get to your notes notes app is you double click on your home button and then click on the notes app and write write that extra idea so far you have two ideas written down or more and you'll write one more so i've given you the instructions but now i'm going to model for you how this looks so i'm going to stop sharing my screen and go through these steps all right so the first step is to open your camera app. So you may have to swipe left or right to find it. I see my camera app is right there. And I'm gonna click on that. Now I'm going to scan that QR code and notice how the top of my, um, my iPad, I have this little pop-up from Safari. It says website QR code. I'm going to go up here and I'm gonna click on that. Click. And then it's going to open a tab in my Safari browser. And this is a Wakelet collection that I made just for you guys. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna scroll, read, try, and play with some of these ideas. Um, I'm gonna give you guys five minutes to explore. And then after you're done exploring, I want you to write down, um, or copy and paste some strategies in your notes app. So I'm gonna give you guys about five minutes to do this and then we will, uh, we will move on. So five minute timer has started, you may begin. And if you have questions, feel free to drop them in the chat.
Some of these items in this wakelet are videos, so you can play that and kind of see what they're doing. And all of them are links most to Twitter where I found these ideas. All right, take about two more minutes. Remember, you're scrolling through this wakelet connection. Explore, read, try, and play. And if you find anything that you don't want to forget, double click on that home button, write it in your notes. You can also write it in the chat. I'd be curious to see what you've discovered. And just to let you guys know, Wakelet is a free service, I believe by Microsoft. Um, and it's a way that you can collect anything, websites, Google Docs, posts, articles, anything online, videos, YouTube, whatever. And you can collect them into a curated things and put them in the order that you want and make it private or public and share with your kids. So. If I was a teacher, this is where I would curate my research resources for my students if they're researching a topic. That way they have a list of curated content that they can explore. It's similar to Padlet and it's unlimited. Like Padlet, you can only have so many Padlets and this one you can have unlimited. So it's really designed for us teachers. You like freebies. Right. And, um, and you can make it so your wakelet is collaborative so other people can add ideas and resources. But I would say it's different than um, Padlet in that it's not really for post-it. It's more for like resources that you're organizing. All right, hopefully you had a chance to get some ideas. If you found something cool, share it in the chat. And we have about three minutes left, so it's not enough time to go over this, but what I'm gonna have you guys do is check this out later. Um, go ahead and scan this QR code with your iPad uh, camera app and check it out later. So I'll give you guys about 15 seconds to Double click on your home button, go back to your camera app, scan this QR code in five, four, three, two, and one. And if we had time, we would have you guys evaluate on a Jamboard and breakout room, but we ran short of time today. Um, but um, if you have ideas on how we can make this session even better, would you mind uh, sharing your ideas in the feedback form? And we'll hopefully drop this in the chat. And if you want more sessions like this, well, BV is like our number one customer right now. So you guys are getting a ton of these things, more coming at you soon. Um, are there any questions before we close our time together? Any questions, go ahead and drop them in the chat 
or you can unmute yourself and we'd love to hear your voice. All right, well, if there's no questions, thank you guys so much for joining us today and experimenting and exploring with the iPad. Hopefully this will give you a chance to kind of learn a little bit more about it and try out some apps and strategies. Oh, and then Denise says, just a heads up, iPad doesn't work well with Synergy. I could see that happening. But I would try it on different browsers. You can try it on Safari, but I would also try it on Chrome and see what happens. Maybe it doesn't work on either one of them. But yeah, some systems are designed for only one type of device. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for coming, and we will see you next time. Looks like we have a training coming up again with BV in about 15 minutes. Hi guys. Can you can you drop the sign out into the chat? It's already we, we there. Need, oh, it is. Yeah, but we don't need oh, a actually. sign out. We just needed the sign in. Oh, oh okay. All We're right, gonna cool. assume everyone stayed. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thanks, and then Laura. the rest, the next group will be coming in at two fifteen, Laura. Yes, two fifteen. It's gonna be Kinder and Third. Um, and um, I just sent you an email, Jill. Yes, and I we, was, <laughs> no, we I just was, touched it. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. I was just it's, sitting over here thinking about um, collaboration because when kids come to the building, some will come to the building and some will not come to the building. And so teachers are going to need tools um, focused on how do, yeah. I, how do I continue to facilitate collaboration when I have half of them here and half of yeah, them there? It, yeah, that concurrent teaching where you have zoom kids and you right. have and room kids that's what i heard last night they said zoom and room room, <laughs> room and zoom. that's awesome okay. yeah i Love know it. okay that's a good term yeah and then, zoom and room yeah, yeah we're, we're we'll be working on that trying to figure that out and um by the end awesome. of the week we'll be getting out some um equipment pictures and stuff too that may help teachers to have some ideas as we go forward once we start reopening up the schools because okay. it is, um, it, it's hard because we've done it ourselves with our training with real life people in the room with us and then those on Zoom and stuff like that. And it's it's hard. It's hard. It to is very hard. We were trying when we thought kids were coming back in November, December, we had actually did a meeting with our kinder parents and kind of talked through like what would happen at school. So they had a really good idea of, um,